Hi, everyone. Welcome to another video. My name is Chris Capitura. I'm here with Dr. Sharif Ibrahim. Today's topic is related to two topics that we've talked a lot about, heart attacks and high blood pressure. It's called arterial calcification. So, Sharif, right off the top, can you, can you explain the risk and a little bit more about what this actually is? Thank you, Chris. Yes, this is really a very important topic because I remember in the old days, in the 70s and 80s, we look into the x-rays and we see this vascular calcification, arterial calcification, and we say, okay, this is incidental finding, which has got no clinical significance. But now we have discovered that this is a very serious condition because it is strongly linked to hypertension. And it is a very well known now and the like cause of heart disease and aortic uh, aneurysm. Aorta is the main artery of the body. And the aortic calcification is a sinister condition because it can end up in ruptured artery. And this is a fatal condition. If you want to see how common is that, there is two studies. One study looked at those who are over 70s and it was interestingly, two thirds of them have a significant vascular calcification. Uh, another studies uh, looked into uh, normal people who have got no symptoms at all in the US and uh, 30 to 50% of them have got a uh, vascular calcification. So it is very important to talk about it today. There are two distinct characteristics of this that can harm someone with regards to arterial that calcification. It yes, the CT scan is the best technology that can pick up this vascular calcification even at early stages. But unfortunately, it cannot distinguish between where the calcification is happening in the arterial wall because there are two patterns of calcification. One pattern that happens in the interior or the inner lining of the blood vessel, and we call it the entima. And calcification of the entima is always associated with atherosclerotic disease. And as we know, atherosclerotic disease is when we have the uh, cholesterol plaques being deposited into the arteries uh, and integrate the newly formed plaque uh, into the vessel wall. The implication of that, it narrows the arterial lumen and if the artery lumen is completely blocked by a clot, then that means we are going to end up having an acute cardiac event like a heart attack, or if it is in the brain circulation, it can result in a stroke. The other type of calcification happen in the middle layer of the artery. Uh, and this is really very interesting because this happens in aging people, people who are over the age of 50 or 60. And it also happens in diabetic patients and patients with chronic uh, kidney disease. The interesting thing about this, it results in what is known as systolic hypertension, the recording of the blood pressure. You have got the top number and the bottom number. The systolic, when the heart contract, it measures the pressure of the heart contraction, and this is represented by the top number on the, on the blood pressure recording. Uh, you have got systolic hypertension, uh, very high blood pressure during the heart contraction. Unfortunately, it results in lower diastolic number. The diastolic number is when the heart relaxes. Diastole is more important even than systole. Why? Because you have the heart vessels, the coronary artery, run in between the heart muscles. And when the heart contracts, it sends blood to the rest of the body, but not to the heart muscle itself. And so the heart will wait until uh, we get the heart relaxation during the history. And this is a time when the um, coronary artery uh, uh, will be filled. So if we are going to have a lower pressure on the um, diastole, uh, then we are not only really going to push adequate amount of blood into the coronary artery. Shreep, is this condition, is this brought on by lifestyle? Why is this occurring? We've talked about people getting older and that's one component, but is this only for older people, or is this a condition for any age? This is a condition that happens in uh, quite a big uh, number of people. Um, most of people who have got hypertension, those who have got heart uh, disease, people who have got like um, uh, a stroke and chronic kidney disease, um, those people who have had arthritis, and those who have also uh, suffered from osteoporosis, thinning of the bone. It's interestingly, it is common in patients who have got teeth and gum disease as well. And those people who take a big dose of calcium, 
those taking more than one gram of calcium per day, they are at risk of this condition. And those people who go on low fat diet, because you see the vitamins that help this condition like vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, they're both fat soluble vitamins, they are fat. And when people go on low fat diet, they're not eating these vitamins. And so they develop this calcification as well. This is a serious condition, but as in many of the cases when we talk, there is a rather simple approach to getting it back under control. You just mentioned some of the vitamins. So can, let's talk a little bit about the dietary choices and in particular, the, these supplements that you talk about, especially D3 and K. Yeah, I think this is a very interesting area here because most of people actually, they think about calcium when they talk about the bone health. They think about calcium uh, and vitamin D. It's very important for the bone, but it's not really good for calcium to be deposited in soft tissue, blood vessels. We have got two vitamins that help the metabolism of calcium. One of them is vitamin D3, and that vitamin D3 sits on the receptor in the intestine, and it facilitates the absorption of calcium. The distribution of calcium to the different tissues in the body is done by another vitamin, which is the vitamin K2. If we say, for example, take calcium and vitamin D, then the risk of having calcification in vessels and other soft tissue is very high. So I think the best thing to do here is we have to make sure that we have got adequate amount of vitamin K2, either uh, in diet or as, uh, as, as a supplement. So let's now talk a little bit about diet. There are a lot of options available. And of course, we're always talking healthy here. Where can we find vitamin K or vitamin D in food? And what other healthy fats would you encourage someone to eat? I think the most important actually source of vitamin K2 is eggs. Uh, one egg contains 70 to 90 microgram of uh, vitamin K2, and the requirement is about 180 microgram per day. So a couple of eggs per day will give you adequate amount of vitamin K2. It is also available in fermented food. And the most important one is the Japanese, something called natto. It's always in abundance in dairy products. The hard cheese, butter, and the liver as well is also rich in vitamin K2. And cod, uh, cod liver oils also very rich in uh, vitamin K2. There is quite a few studies. One of the studies that showed that vitamin K2 actually reduced the calcification of, of uh, blood vessels and increased bone density in a good number of people. Another study showed vitamin K2 increased the elasticity of uh, blood vessels. There is one study which showed that, you see, calcification of the small vessels of the brain is the cause of dementia. Giving vitamin K2 help the, those patients to reverse their dementia. Another study about postmenopausal ladies, they had the chronic heart disease. They had been given vitamin K2 and it was found they reduced the mortality of cardiovascular or heart disease in these postmenopausal ladies. And another study also looked into how long does it take to clean the blood vessels and it was found to be three years on vitamin K2 to clean your blood vessels. That's an interesting point right there. People are like, three years? But imagine that you're 50 or 60 years old, and you've had a lifetime of the wrong food in this buildup. And now in three years, you can clear that by taking the vitamin K2. The treatment it, uh, is quite simple. So despite the fact that it can cause really very serious condition, it's not hard to treat or to prevent. As always, Sharif, fantastic information. Thank you, everyone, for listening to today's video. We look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Take care. Sharif and I appreciate you liking this video. And more importantly, remember to subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of content that we're going to be creating, and we don't want you to miss a single second of it.